In this lesson, we're going to do the second example. The first one is we were talking about average velocity and how we found that, which really just ended up being slope. But this time, we're going to take this idea and find an instantaneous velocity, which means that as we start to pull this second point closer and closer and closer to the original point, we're going to get a slope that's more accurate to what the instantaneous is. So to do that, eventually we're going to use some calculus. But right now, um, we are just going to use calculator. We're going to do a little bit of plug and chug. So our instantaneous velocity is a limit. OK, so our velocity instantaneous is going to be the limit as t approaches 1 of our average velocity, which is then the limit as t approaches 1 of this idea. OK, so we're going to take it specifically to this example. So it's going to be our s of t minus s at 1 divided by t minus 1. So this value, this 3, is going to get instantly or infinitely close to 1. OK, so we're going to have to build a little bit of a, not a table, but we got to do some values. So as we start to pull this, we're going to get a little bit more of an accurate slope at that instantaneous moment. So we're going to use calculator to help our cause. Um, but here's kind of the idea that um, we're going to start with putting our function, our position function of negative 16 t squared plus 96 t into y1 on the calculator. OK, so y1, we're going to go to y1. So there's my equation. OK, so I already typed that in. And then what we're going to do is we're essentially going to, on the calculator, um, we're essentially going to do, um, to find all of these different rates of change, these slopes, is we're going to do y1 by plugging in a certain value, minus y1 plugging in 1, and then 2 minus 1. So here's what I mean. If we have an average velocity, and our interval is going to go from 1 to 2, OK, so we did that up here. What is our average velocity from 1 to 2? Essentially, we're doing this. So I want to do this, but I want to use the calculator to kind of help our cause. right? And that's why we're going to plug in this equation. So we do this. We already know that our answer is supposed to be 48 feet per second. So here's how this will work on the calculator. right? So to get to the y1, there's a couple different ways to do that. We can either hit the long way to do this. So let me quit. So we're going to do we're going to create this equation onto here. Right, so the long way of doing this is we're going to go to y, go to, sorry, go to vars, variables, and then we're going to go to y variables and hit function, and then there's a list of all of our equations. So if I put the 2 in there, um, us plugging in 2 gave us uh, 128 from a previous problem, and so with that formula in there, all it's going to do is just plug in 2 into that function. All right, so there's the 128. So that means I can do this a little bit quicker by going whole full on equation and go, all right, I'm going to go y1. Now, here's my shorter way of doing it. I don't have to go to bars. I can go alpha f4, and that is my shortcut to get to those. So 2 minus that of 1, and then 2 minus 1. So we already did that. We got 48, and we're just validating and verifying that we get 48 again. So, so we got 48 feet per second. If we start to squeeze that, instead of going from 1 to 2, we go to 1 to 1.5. That starts to get us a little bit of a steeper slope, right? which is going to be more accurate. So here's where the calculator comes in. So I don't want to keep doing this by hand. And so we're going to become more efficient. So we're going to do, in fact, I'm going to copy that formula. And then I'm going to make that, and I'm going to insert 1.5, delete the 2, insert 1.5, delete the 2. 
So that gives us 56. So now, if I want to be even more accurate, we can go to 1.1. 1 .1. Right, and so take that formula, make that a one, make that a one. We're getting 62.4. And then say we do 1.01. .01. We're going to do a couple of these just to kind of get a feel like where's this thing going? Because um, sometimes you have to do a couple to really get a feel for where this is going. So we're going to insert a zero. Insert a zero, All right? So it's getting closer, right? We're kind of winding down a little bit. We went from 48 to 56 to 62 to 63, almost 64. One, 1. 0, 0, 1. Insert a zero. Insert a zero. Okay, getting closer. 63.984, maybe I'll do it two more times. 1.0001, right? So now, so now our difference in our denominator is, in, is really close, right? We're getting infinitely close with this. So it's almost approaching one, right? So we're trying to figure out then what is this math? What is this slope approaching? So we'll do it again. Insert another zero. Insert another zero. Well, all right, so 63.9984. And I bet if we did it one more time, one, 1.0001, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, I bet it's just going to add another nine in there. So let's verify that that's happening. Insert zero. Or to zero. Yep. So basically, we are getting infinitely close to 64. 84. So our instantaneous velocity, based on kind of the, the math that we've done, kind of the uh, plug and chug version of this, is our instantaneous velocity is approaching. 64 feet per second. Now, eventually we'll show that there's a calculus way to do this where we're with a lot less work um, and we can get to this 64 uh, much, much faster. Right? But that's for another time. Uh, but this is the idea of it. The idea of the limit is we are taking a value and just getting closer and closer and closer and closer to kind of our starting value. So we're squeezing the denominator approaching that, that one value, and then that's also changing something with what's going on with the numerator. And then eventually it's going to approach a very particular value.